I'll go up to the door here. Well, hello. Can we come in and see your sure, house? Sure, sure. <laughs> it's kind of a messy place right now. Well, of course. I'm just going to do a sweep of the living room here. Here's the fireplace. Well, wait till I get this down. Oh, he doesn't want to see that. Okay. Just do a big Okay, now, Mother, this clock... Was Aunt Lizzie's, right? Mm-hmm. When did you? Oh, Lord. Dead 40, 45 years. Uh-huh. She died when she was... It was a wedding present, so you figure it's so, way, way over 100 years old. Yeah. And that's supposed to be my clock, right? It's your clock. Get it. <laughs> TV and VCR. the VCR that Mother didn't want but enjoys now. Mm -hmm. At the uh, fireplace. Uh, that picture, uh, I'm going to close that. in on that. Who is that. Annie, Alice Mary's oldest granddaughter. Uh huh. You want the date on it? Yeah. There's a group just walking in front of me. Uh, 70, 76. 76. Okay. All right, now this is interesting stuff. That's the old K part we got when I was probably in about the eighth grade or so on. I guess so. Got that from Madison. Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's no longer works. It's just a cabinet, right? Yeah. Okay. What's this stuff on the? Well, that's a that those two pictures belong to Aunt Liz also. Uh huh. And she gave me those long before she died, and I've enjoyed having them. But I, those are going to Joan Jenny. Okay. I first got them. She said, oh, Pearl, can I have those someday when you don't use them anymore? You know how people say that. And um, so, of course, those are going to Joan. She's always been a very good friend of mine. And that's a little, uh, I'm looking at this card playing thing. Is kind of cute. It's, uh, uh, that, that, um, Annie gave me that. Somebody gave it to her for a wedding present, and she didn't like that kind of stuff, so she gave it to me. Yeah. Almost. Uh, how many of these do you think you've got? Oh, well, I've got over five thousand dollars worth. Of that. I can't remember. Yeah. And they're worth more than that now. I'm sure Paul Gross is advertising them now. He said we're again. Are they all out? Well, except yours are in the basement. That you mean the? Crash. 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 And then there's some of them in the uh, in the bedroom, right? in the front bedroom. Yeah, I remember when I was a boy. For you? Yes, yeah, sure. For Mother's Day and birthdays, I think they'd be around four or something in those oh, days. Yeah. The Steve That's right. Paul Bowser brought that back, yeah. I think. Along with a lot of other things he brought. What about this mirror? That mirror was in her house after she died. You know, and got rid of the house. Uh -huh. I kept that, but everybody that came. And where we were looking at that stuff is at the dining room alcove there. It was Theta's. Now let me show it to you. Okay. It's cracking it. They're just. Grandma Deebles. You got to hold them from the. Grandma Deebles gave me that years ago. Uh huh. And that was given to her little girl when she was born. As a gift, they always gave those. Okay, now I'm looking at this picture. Any the picture down there? The, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that came from Jane's house. It's an old. It's one that Jane gave me a few things from her mother's house. Okay. When she broke up the. Okay. It came from Jane's also. Uh huh. Okay. okay, what about this cup on the bottom here? Well, that came from Jane's, and so did that. And this, Fern Bossert gave me, years ago. I went up on the top. Right there. So. Sugar bowl, looks like. Yeah, it's 
This is a wreath. A wreath that was given to Dad. Not a wreath that's like this. But these these were in, in the flowers that were given to Dad. And so Alice Mary bought this, the wreath itself, and the wreath for me. You mean the flowers at the funeral? Yeah, yeah, oh. they were from the funeral. Okay, and then on this table we got some interesting stuff. We have the pictures of the <laughs> Yeah, the fiftieth wedding anniversary. Yeah, okay. And that table is real old too. I don't know how old it is. Really old. Uh-huh. And now I'm looking at the chair and the picture above that you got from Jane King, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're in the kitchen where Mother's just learned she hadn't taken her pills. That's right. Oh, the sink, very good. Yeah. Thirty dishes are in the sink. Do not look at that. But anyway, it's a nice kitchen. I like my kitchen too. Very much. Back to like my whole house. Don't you ever hear me say anything about it? Mm -hmm. Back through there. If you're looking over here, you see a little table and around then to the living rooms. to get this. Well, it's a piece of jewelry right. too. Uh -huh. It's a pretty piece. Yeah, interesting stuff. Which one? Those two blue ones I bought, and the other one was a gift. And what I'm showing now is stuff that's around the kitchen. Just stuff. And everybody puts stuff on the refrigerator. Yeah. These things you kind of just forget those are packaged things. I can't quite get back far enough, so I'll do a, a kind of a sweep here. The mother's bedroom. And Dad's, while well, he was alive, the closet, and, and their bed's there. And there's my mom. What are you holding in your hand? My little thing that I get, so that nobody's going to scare me. I don't get scared. Myself. When you fall down, you say, I need help. I need help. I've fallen. That's right. That's good. Now we'll look at it, some of the things that are... Uh, on your walls and so on. Isis Gibson. Okay, well, I'm looking at the... Uh, at this. At this. Yeah, we've had that in the family a long time, and you've had it refinished, right? Yeah. All of this was all refinished, every bit of it, except the rest was all refinished. And that picture up there is what? That's one that Kay sent me for Christmas oh. about four or five years ago. Oh, yeah, she said it would go with the wallpaper. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And uh, who's that on the chair? That's Alice Mary made that for me. Made one for Kay, remember? Uh-huh. And over to the desk. That's the dresser. The dresser. And the picture of Dad is the best picture I ever saw of him. I never take that picture down. Uh-huh. A picture of Grandpa Kay mm -hmm. your dad? Yeah, my dad. I don't have a nice picture of my mother at that age at all. And there's your 50th anniversary thing. Yeah. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Pearl and Lou's 50th, 1928, 1978. There's a couple of handsome children, especially that young lad. Now, this is Mother's guest bedroom. Yeah, look at it. Well, it looks okay here, but there's a bunch of stuff of mine getting ready to pack and throw away. So this is the good view of it. Don't show them the Very back. comfortable bed. Over there is... Where did you get these dressers and things? Well, these, these are cherry, huh? 
Yes, this is cherry. This is good furniture. Okay, now there's a picture. Is that a picture of Grandma on the wall there? That's a picture of Grandma Needles. I'm going to... So many people think Alice Mary looks like her. Yeah. She was a beautiful woman, I'll tell you that. Yeah, sure. I forget what that tells for, but I got that when I was in the hospital one time, too. And, no, I got that from Tubby Shell for my birthday. Yeah. These are all Hummels, aren't mm -hmm. they? One's a clock. Well, the clock, that other one's a clock, but that's not a real Hummel. That's oh. it's like a Hummel, but it's not a real Hummel. I don't think. This is the messy part, because, see, I'll do a swing through here, because I'm getting ready to go back to Juno tomorrow. Anyway, there's the other dresser with stuff on it. That table is an old, old table that Mae Rester gave me many years ago. Oh, yeah? I had it finished like that, and I've never done anything to it. And now Mae died some years ago. Well, that chair has been in our family since I have been, yeah, almost. Yeah, it's too bad that you can't take that home or somebody. Yeah. That is what Jane brought up, Bill. Oh, I see. Uh, this, where did you get this? From Jane King. The picture. Is my birth? That was a picture. That was for my birthday. Uh huh. I'm gonna take a picture of this picture above the bed because I like it. And I like it too. And note that uh, the bedspread on that picture. Yeah. Well, mine is a better bedspread than that. Well, that hasn't got as much work on it. See, that's well, yeah, but it's the same kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, the same. It's hard to see much of the bathroom here, except this. This is kind of interesting over here. This. Uh, Anne made those things. Well, no, I'm looking at the. Uh, that little rack. The rack, yeah. Oh, that's the that we got that when we moved in our first apartment, Dad and I. Uh huh. That was there, and and in nobody Maryland? ever yes, and nobody ever came to get it, so we kept it all all those years. And yeah. We've been married. We would have been married. Uh, Huh, 65 years that Dad was alive. Were you renting that apartment? Yeah, and we took that with us because nobody ever came and got it. So you kind of stole it. I know we didn't. We asked different people when they'd come in and nobody knew anything about it. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, that. oh you don't remember that. You oh, born. yes. I re you were not born when we had... <laughs> <laughs> I guess. She's, I said she's hitting me. I remember that as a child. I don't, well, I don't remember when you, I don't remember when you stole it, but I, you know, oh. remember it as a child. Oh. No, you might have. Oh, sure, that's been in your bat in our bathroom every place we ever lived. Uh -huh. I'd never let anybody take that away from me. I just want to picture this wall. You bet. If you I can't see much did you of it. Wipe it dry today. Yeah. <laughs> this is a shower wall that. It gives me a lot of trouble. If you get up here and you don't wipe this sucker, you are in big trouble. You bet. I'd make a quick recording of the faucet that is not dripping. And the dripping so that you don't care. This is the uh, um, oh. fire. Uh, alarm that mother got up and tried to spray when it started chirping one night at three o'clock because the, the battery was low so she sprayed all over and got the sprayed so much that she got the floor slippery and slipped and almost killed, almost her. killed herself and almost had to press that little button and say help help me i'm falling and i can't get up okay this is the entrance to the basement and we go down mother doesn't really want this to be shown but we'll see what this is just where everything is all stored. This uh, basement's on two sides. This is a storage and the oh, you know, the washer and the dryer, and that kind of stuff. The furnace. And this is a little spot where mother does <coughs> uh, ironing, sewing. And boy, this sewing machine's been around as long as I have, too. Here, I don't make them like that anymore. Make them a lot better now. And I don't know if you can see Kind of dark, but this is just a place where you can plump people when you get a lot of them. And here's just a basket of stuff. I hope she's not throwing this away. Look at this handsome marine there. I'm just taking a picture of this adding machine because Lisa wants that someday, I think. All right, this high chair was uh, 
my high chair and Alice's. Alice's first. I always got this thing second. And uh, you bought it new when our kids were born? You don't remember where you got it or who gave it to you or anything like that? Lift the lid there. Let's see how that works. It's probably been painted 13 times. Oh, Lord, at least. Needs some more paintings. But it's not bad for a chair that took care of two kids. Well, Lisa has said she wants that chair. You going to give it to her? Mother? Sure, I can't. I'm, I said when I'm gone, you can fight all you want. <laughs> oh, I guess. Don't fight in front of me. I'm sure okay, we're, we're doing it now. Okay, well, let's get let's get rid of that. Not right this moment, but after you're Oh, good shot. Okay. I have cable. <laughs> she has what? I have a degree in communications, oh. Dad. I hate to tell you, but oh. you were a social worker. Oh, my <laughs> God. Hmm. Okay, now okay. tell me, first of all, <laughs> how you got into this idea. <laughs> well... You remember when I was six years old, we were going to the dump, and you let me sit in the back, going around in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that was my first brush with speed in the open air. No, but you, but you. Okay, who was drinking? Okay, <laughs> well, I No, actually, I'd heard. Actually, the first thing that kind of got me involved was I had read and I'd heard that they actually do it in Anchorage at something where you could jump out. And I don't know if it was a static line or a tandem jump. Like a bungee. No, not not a, a static. Oh, static. Static okay, line yeah. or or a tandem mm -hmm. jump, but where you could pay. Uh, an amount of money and you know they get everything organized for you. Bottom line is you need to end up with a jump and go to class with that. Well, maybe the next time I go to a volleyball term or something, I could work that in. So it was kind of in the back of my mm. of my mind, kind of like kind of like traveling. You mean like weeks ago or months ago? A, a year ago. Kind of always been. You know, that's something I should try sometime. You know mm -hmm. that. You know, that would be sc scary as. All right. Should, is this the R-rated version or PG? Scary as shit. Was that what you were going to yeah. say? No, this is a. That's okay. Okay. That's vulgar, but allowable, would you say? I would go. Okay. I mean, I mean if, if you want the authentic. Talk to him. I mean, talk like you would be talking if this was Pretend wasn't you're on. in the red dog. Well, actually, uh, that's not what I'm. Oh, no, he knows that, that that's vulgar, but okay. allowable. For um, so anyway, I, I, I did have it in my mind to maybe accomplish at some point in my life. And uh, Trent came back from Japan. He's been living in Portland the last few months. And... Um, so he's come back, and uh, so we had a special poker game for him uh, two, Thursday, two, you know, ten days ago on a Thursday. And uh, so played. I drank heavily. I was going on call the next, next day. So drank heavily at the poker game, did pretty well. Trent gave me a ride home and uh, invited him in for some post-game BSing and uh, proceeded to get a little bit drunker. And actually Trent wasn't that bad. I mean, he was drivable. And uh, so we're sitting there, and... We started BSing, and Trent, Trent's very open, and he's an open guy. And we're, we're talking about life-changing experiences, you know, what, it's, what it was like for him to be over in Japan all the time and stuff like that. And he's traveled all, uh, all around Asia, kind of the same bug I had in a way, a little more. It turns out he's been on the same island that I've been in, on in Thailand, on coast and Louis. So we're, we're talking about that being a life-changing experience. And he goes, well, speaking of life-changing experience, he had gone to some seminar, I think. And I'm not sure what exactly what group it was for, but... It was several a several day seminar where you know they got in touch with their feelings or whatever. But they knew that at the end they'd have to do something oh, overcoming okay. fear. Anyway, yeah. they did bungee jumping and, and skydiving. And did he bungee jump? Yeah, he was bungee jumped. And uh, so anyway, I go skydiving. And I go, I, I go, uh, well, yeah, he went skydiving. He goes, yeah, you know, he's explaining the I go, yeah, I've heard, I've heard about that. I go, actually, you know, I've been, I've been thinking to do it. I'd like to, I'd actually like to do that, you know. And he goes, because he said he'd done one in Portland. Also, I go, well, you know, I've got this free ticket that I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be. Get, Visiting Mark, I got a free ticket. I'm going to be using up, aren't you? And, and this, you know, Trent was leaving on Tuesday, and I was going to be there last weekend. And I go, could you set up? And Trent goes, and he goes, oh, oh, he goes, who do I want to do that again? Do I? He goes, I don't know. He goes, it's not so much the time. He goes, and the money is kind of an issue too. You know, it's 129 bucks. And, and I go, well, are we waiting here at all? And uh, so anyway, we were talking about it, and I. Uh, he goes, well, you know, I, I'm not sure. And uh, I, I, that's something you know, I kind of want to do. He goes, well, you know, I'll look into it and get a hold of you on Monday. So he's leaving on Tuesday, call him Monday, and I man, I really, you know, I'm up for it, you know. And he, he's going, well, I'm not sure if I can do it. I go, well, even if you don't, you know, could you, uh, he goes, I don't know how the weather is either. The weather's kind of rainy. 
So you didn't, yeah, I, you, you didn't have any second thoughts, even. No, I, I said, hey, you know, let's do it. Yeah, at this point, I'm like, I yeah. mean, that's when you were still kind of drinking and stuff. But the next morning. Yeah, I mean, I knew I wanted to do it. Uh, I would say, I mean, it was like, yeah, here's the opportunity, and it was kind of like, well, now I've had the experience of thinking about doing something, and finally having the gonads to do it, just like Thailand, you know, mm -hmm. decided to do it and going off and doing it. I said, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. And uh, so anyway, the next day, you know, I say, you know, even if you're not going, can you set it up for me? And he says, that's when he knew that I, I was serious about doing it. And I, it's kind of funny because I was talking to him, he was at, at home, you know, and I can hear his mom in the background going, no, no, Trent, you don't want to do that again. <laughs> and, stuff like that. and I'm just laughing. Anyway, so he goes down there, he calls Wednesday, I've been able to get a hold of the guy. And, um, Anyway, I finally get I finally get down there on Friday, and uh, I talk to talk to Paul Martin, who at work who, who's done it, and he goes, oh yeah, you'll enjoy it, and uh, so I, uh, <laughs> let's go down there Friday, get a hold of Trent, and call him, and yeah, he's got it set up for tomorrow at uh, two thirty. We're supposed to be out there three o'clock. So Mark and I, we uh, played poker Friday night with Trent, and we're BSing about it. We're trying to talk Mark into doing it too, and. Uh, could, could never convince them. Finally got on a scale of zero to 100. Probably got him up to a 30 at one point. But when he got to, the, to the strip, he, you know, he's back down to zero. <laughs> you know, so we're sitting there and we we sign up and everything and walk in and you know there's there's, there's a sign up on the wall that says uh, uh, save on parachutes factory seconds. You know, so I thought that was kind of mm -hmm. humorous. And uh, okay, well I got kind of a sense of humor. And uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so you get out there and you just sit in the sun for a long time. Okay. Okay. Continue. Do, do yeah. Lisa can hear. Or? Doesn't matter. Okay, I thought she wouldn't hear. Okay. So get there and you're watching people jump. And everyone looks, and I gotta admit, everyone kind of fit the mold of who you thought sky jumpers would How be. How many were there? It, it was a Saturday, so there was a lot of, there were probably 40, 50 people there. You know, that were going to die? Not that we're going to die. Some people were there watching their friends, like Mark was there watching, and there's yeah. probably, you know, a fair number of people work. Were they all first-time divers? No. Um, it, it was, it, it varied, you know, some people, uh, I mean, there were people that it was their first time, but there, you know, there's people that have done it all the time, they're just going up for fun, they're uh -huh. just flying up and jumping. And now other this people is, that, it, okay. It, it, it's a business where they... You know, they accept money and they'll take you up and and, and help you skydive. And uh, but I mean, they can also just go up there for fun. I think you know, and jump or yeah, pay fifteen dollars a You get licensed or something? Yeah, after a certain number of jumps, you get. You know, I think it might be fifteen jumps. You have to pa probably pass the test and jump fifteen times. And I think you kind of work into a slowly. You know, you go into a static jump and then it, I think like your first jump, they. Uh, your first ripcord jump, you know, they, you jump out with two other guys and they're actually holding on to you oh. as, as you go down and you pull. I guess the veterans can do just about anything. Okay. Like so, you, you, so you got out there and you, did you know much about it as you were getting there? Nothing. Or did you? I mean, from Trent, he didn't tell you the procedure, the protocols, or anything. No, I knew that. I knew that for a tandem jump, you know, you strap the guy to your back and then you, you know, you both jumped out of the plane. Okay, that's a canopy jump. What's that? Is that what you said? A, a tandem jump, tandem two people. Jump. Okay. So okay, so you got there. So you get uh, there, and eventually. What was your emotions as you were? Pretty, pretty calm. In fact, Trent, Trent would say he goes, uh, you know, probably pretty calm to this whole thing. You know, at the, at the very top, he goes, I mean, even going up the plane, he goes, you're, you're, you're very calm. It's like a, a car player has the nuts, you know, when you mm -hmm. got the lock. He goes, but let's see, open that door. You're, yeah. you got real serious. But uh. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was just casual. I actually was getting kind of annoyed that it was taking so long. We got there at 2.33 and finally jumped about 6.30 probably or 7. When we finally hit the ground, it was 8 o'clock. Well, did they have, uh, like, a uh, ground school type? Yeah, there was, like, a half-hour class where they kind of explain what's going on. How many were in that class? Were there other first-time uh, jumpers? Yeah, there were four other people besides us. There was a group of four people about 20 years old. Uh, a girl had been talking about jumping a couple of months before, and they had gotten her a surprise birthday gift, which was uh -huh. to go jumping. <laughs> and uh, what kind of airplane? You know, 
Uh, they had a 206, which not only went up in something probably about like years like 170 or something, something real small. I mean, the canopy was, I mean, <coughs> door was off. Probably. Well, that was the scary part. I mean, finally getting the place. Like, okay, time to jump. So we, we suit up and. Uh, well, wait, before you get into that, what did they tell you on this ground school thing? Did, 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 did uh, how to arch. You want to. Arch, why it's important to arch. There's some aero, there's some aerodynamics with arching. Um, if you don't arch your back, you end up, you know, if you're like, if you're, if if you are not arched, then as the air comes in, it kind of tries to find oh, yeah. a way to get out, and it flips you around. You know, if you're if you're arched, then it evens out. If you, if you go like this, you'll end up flipping over, and you can't open a chute while you're upside down. You know, and the guy's under you. So oh, yeah. at some point, you got to arch, otherwise you just hit the ground. Okay. Because it would just reef you. So he's going to be with you, and when you jump out. He is. We are. I'm wearing a harness. He has got the parachute on, and we are hooked together in four places. Velcro. Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's one parachute. Yes. Well, two. I mean that in the reserve, but yeah. I mean he's, he's the only guy that's got the. He's got the pack. All I have on is a harness, and he's attached so to So you're just back. attached to him. Yeah. Okay. So the goal is to come out of the plane and just go. Psh, are you like on? This. Uh, now uh, you're on his back or no? No, he's, he's on, on my back. back. So I, so you're not even aware that he's there as you're falling. So if you, I mean, you can't feel him or anything as you're actually falling. Really? Yeah. You get the you get the full effect. We uh. <coughs> yeah. So eventually we walk, we walk over to the plane. It's a little plane just like yours, and it's been. The pilot seat is there, and the rest of it's been taken out. Right. And you know, there's a wall. You know, it's got got the classic like this. Uh huh. And uh, you know, there's, there's duct tape all in there, just like <laughs> just like in the last one. Oh, this is familiar. You know, much duct tape. Uh -huh. And uh, and we're gonna be jumping first. So Trent and them get in there behind the pilot seat. We get in the door. And I, at, at this point, we've had our we've been you know he, he's hooked them. We get in, we sit in the plane, and I'm sitting in his, in his lap, so, uh, like, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here. Uh-huh. The pilot is right here, Trent and his Skymaster right here, my guy is right behind me. Now, wait, how many were in the plane all together? Total of five, including the pilot. Trent was with you? Yeah. Was he going too? Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, he did decide to go yeah. again. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. And he went to go out. We couldn't jump together. In fact, he at one point we were going to go up on two different planes, and Trent figured that out and said, "Oh, oh, I'll just hold on, you know, because he wasn't going to jump." If he yeah, yeah. Be up there with yeah, him. yeah. So anyway, get, we get in the plane. We're just on the ground, and I mean, and the door is, you know, it's right here. We've just kind of gotten in. I mean, we're driving down the runway, and it's not even feeling safe at that point because uh -huh. that's <laughs> right there. And uh, so, so you know, my guy says, "Oh, hold on, hold on, I gotta try to close that." I mean. So it was a door that opened. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, because sometimes they remove doors. But right. Okay. Yeah. No. This one's. I mean, to, to to shut it. I mean, it was one of those things, just like getting a car when you're overloaded with luggage. I had to, you know, go like this, and they <coughs> yeah. slam oh. it shut. Oh, okay. So oh. we're wedged in right next to this door. Uh -huh. So we start taking off and uh, get some of the apprehension just that you get from in a small plane, you know. And then you start thinking, holy cow, we're getting up here. And, I was thinking 10,000 feet, there's an option, supposedly, you know, you could pay a little bit extra money and jump from 14,000 feet instead of 10,000, but that plane plane wasn't operating, so we're going to go from 10,000. As we got to about 2,000 feet, I started thinking about what's going to happen, and I go, oof, 10,000 is probably, probably plenty. And it's about a 10 or 15 minute, uh, 10 or 15 minute flight up, and you, you uh -huh. know, starting to have a lot of things, or BS, and my guy's back with his eyes closed, and Trent, his guy, Trent had actually jumped with this particular guy in California once before. So what were you, uh, was there was there this sort of anxiety banter going on, or? Uh, and, well, there was some anxiety, but I was actually pretty calm at that point. I was like, you know, I was trying to remember what I was supposed to do on the, you know, on the jump. And, uh, you know, he had told me, we, we had said, okay, well, what's going to happen is, when we fall out, what he wanted me to do is, you know, cluck, hold on to the harness or put my arms right here as we're going down, and, you know, an arch, you know, arch is the most important thing. Well, was it hard to arch with him on your... Your back? No, because I mean he's no. Because there's no weight either, then, huh? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's no weight, and you're just pushing out from here, and I mean you're trying to kind of, trying to reach back and hit his butt with your, with your feet, <laughs> and I mean the fr classic free fall position is right here. Well, we're gonna go like this, and uh, and then on the way down he, he he would he would tap my shoulders, and then I'd I'd go out like this, <laughs> and uh, so that's not you know I'm thinking okay what all do I gotta remember you know 
out of the land and stuff like this. And, and what the deal is, when you get up there, I, I am supposed to, there, you know, out on the little wheel strut, there's a little thing about that wide and about that long. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to basically get my feet out to the end of that, you know, and be ready. And he's, you know, we have to get in the doorway, and he's got to get his feet out the door also, you know, right behind me in my lap. Or I'm in his lap, but, you know, behind me. So, and what's going to happen is he's going to say, ready, set, arch. And he's going to kind of push us out. And as soon as he says that, then I start arching. And then show us on the road. Well, you don't have to step out onto a strut first. Uh, well, yeah, you kind of got to. What you got to do is, yeah, I mean, the, the strut is out over the wheel, and so you got to sit on the very edge of the doorway, which like sit on a windowsill. So With your legs it, sticking out there. Yeah, so in a sense, this is... This is the strut out here. It's a little bit longer. Okay. And, and this is this is the fuselage right here. Yeah. And so this is probably a pretty good reenactment. So we're sitting here, and this is about yeah, this is about the time we're playing that shit right here. Uh huh. And uh, yeah. So we're going up there, okay, and it's finally, so, finally okay, but we're going so where's the outside the airplane? This here? The outside airplane is right okay, here. Okay. Yeah. This is the outside airplane. This is the other outside the airplane right here. I mean. Uh huh. And. Uh, Going through 8,000 feet, I notice we're going through the clouds. Where's this guy, other guy, sitting right then? He, he is behind me. He's wedged up against the front. Is of the he one. strapped to you yet? It, at this point, he has strapped the two bottom ones on. Uh -huh. As we got up to about... So you're kind of sitting on his lap? or Yeah, I'm his in leg? his lap. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, he's right behind me here. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, he, like, he says, now, don't take this personally here. I'm going to have to cinch this up a bit, you know. <laughs> I go, I go good luck. Probably says that every time. Yeah, I go, look, at this joke. point, you are my very best friend. I don't care <laughs> what you do back there. And, uh, so, yeah. So anyway, you go, go through 8,000 feet, starting to get a little bit nervous, and finally it's showtime. It's, we're at 10,000 feet. And there's, there's circling, I mean, it's about 10, yeah, about 10 or 15 minutes to think about it while the plane's getting up to 10,000. And, uh, it's like, okay, open the door. And I lean this way. You open the door. And, uh, instantly, I mean, you forget that you're also going 80 miles an hour this way. And so it's, you know, you can't you can't hear at this point, and. Uh, but the door opens into the wind, so it doesn't really open very wide, does it? How does that work? I think it probably opens all the way up. Goes up. Yeah, I believe so. At any rate, it opens so that there's a. So there's a little portal about. This, you know, this mm -hmm. big, and. Uh, so basically, I have to get from this position I'm at, and here, you know, this is solid fuselage. Here's where the opening is. I'm just, you know, about to tip over this way, going 80 miles an hour. I can't hear. Well, I, I have to get my legs up a little harder. I mean, the scariest part is now. I mean, it is now. Now you're starting to, you got some Twinkies in your shorts. And you got to, I got to, I got to get over there. And that's the hardest part is, I mean, you, you can't hear. It's like, God, I'm like trying to get this leg up in here. Oh, yeah. And I got one, okay, now I've got a leg out in the middle of the air, and I'm like, uh -huh. I'm looking for some duct tape to hold on to. You know, I can't find this thing to even set it on. I'm like, okay, hold on to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, 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 like, 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 like Trent said, you know, he goes, you know, you're real cool up to tell the open door. goes, at that point, you got, you look like you got really serious. And I'm like, and I was, I mean, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eventually, I mean, that's a struggle. And then, you know, like, because you, you don't have any balance. And I, like, I want to get this other, like, kind of wedge. And I'm like this. And I'm searching for the little thing. I finally get, I finally get my put on this little thing right down here and uh -huh. reach out. I, I mean, I'm still like this. I get the other, I'm, uh, and I mean, so now, I mean, all this is 80 mile an hour gust going right here. And he, he's not quite set yet. And I am, oh God, at this point, I'm going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, he's, and I look down, and you know, I'm supposed to get to the end. I, I go, well, this is, I am way out of the end. I go, this is far. I look down, I'm only on the inside of this thing. And I, I mean, I still have to get out this far. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. Oh God. <laughs> and uh, so now, and I can't hear him either. Remember, he's going to say race. I go, well, he's trying to, and he's trying to get situated too. Well, that's bumping me while I'm sitting on the edge of this thing. Well, eventually, before the jump, I am about like this. I'm sitting on the edge of the fuselage right here. My feet are out on this thing. Uh -huh. and that's about how sturdy it was, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and at this point, you're totally scared. And what's going on is, well, <laughs> after, of course, I'm like this, you know, and I'm finally out the going on. Like, okay, let that go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I'm. You know, I'm like, I'm about like this, looking for something, like a strut or something. And while he's bumping, see, he was going to say, ready, set, arch. And, you know, he says, arch, can bump. Well, I can't hear him. I don't know if he's saying, move your arm <laughs> while he's going like this, or he just said, ready, set, arch, and I didn't move. You know, I don't know if I'm goofing up, if I'm screwing yeah. up, if I'm putting us in danger. 
finally so a couple of those and man I was just yeah I was just petrified it was like you know I was a couple times turn around trying to you know like say I, I can't hear you or something like that you know or you know are you gonna bump or are we ready or you know and I'll say you know and was, you know and all of a sudden you know a couple of bumps finally one of those bumps seemed like I had a little more and I just I kind of allowed myself to lean forward in case it was it and, and it was you know mm-hmm. so also we go out and uh, oh man we we go out and uh, so first thing I do, you know, I'm like this, and my face. <laughs> we just instantly try our side. And for me, I mean, I'm going <laughs> like this while we're going. And, I mean, you, you, have you, have you ever jumped on no, a plane for no, training? No. Oh my God! I mean, you are instantly in in the fear zone. And you know, I'm like this, and I'm arched, and we pretty much kind of starting to go down flat, and one arm kind of went out a little, and I felt our start to go like that. <laughs> So I'm in here, and, and so now my whole goal is, okay, stay arched, wait for the tap, wait for the tap. The and tap to tap open? Tap means put my arms out here. Oh, okay. In, in the free fall oh, position. Oh, okay. But for right now, until he, until he taps, I go like this, and, you know, and he's already told me, you know, don't reach back and touch me or anything. You know, that's, you know, that's the best way to get us killed is to reach back and try to uh-huh. you know, ask me something. So, yeah, we are free falling, and I'm just going, and, I mean, the only way, the only thing I've been able to equate it to the, I mean, the intensity. I mean, it might, maybe if you've had a free fall dream where you've just been falling uh-huh. in the bottom of the pit. Did you have a sensation of, of falling? Oh, no. God, yeah. Well, you, yeah. Well, uh, the, the sensation is this. For me, I mean, I've been in, I don't know if you've ever been in a car wreck, but I've been, you know, I've been in two where, I've, I've been in two where uh, it's been about a 40 mile an hour head on collision, and there is a point when that's happening, and you see it happening, and there is a point where you go, oh my God, I'm going to be in a wreck, you know, at 40 uh-huh. miles an hour. And, I mean, you are incredibly intense. I mean, the only, if you haven't been in one of those, the only thing that might just try. closely equate is if, you know, you're bending down, getting something up, and you reach up and bonk your head, and you've got that instantaneous, like, what, you know, yeah, like that. Well, this is 25, 30 seconds straight of that. I mean, imagine going into a car wreck at 40 miles an hour, that one second. Right so so you didn't have an initial uh, terror and then go into ecstasy, that kind of thing. No, you're in terror. solid terror. <laughs> solid terror for probably the first 15 seconds. And, uh, yeah, and I mean, that's how I mean. I mean, I'm just holding on for dear life. Going <laughs> <laughs> and we're going down, you know, go right through the clouds. At eight, you know, I knew when we went by 8,000 feet because, you know, we got, got to fall right through a, right through a cloud. Uh-huh. And I'm just going, and I'm, I'm waiting for the tap, waiting for the tap, you know, to, to go like this. Can I interject a question here? To other plane before you knew you were safe, did you feel like you were going to wet your pants? Actually, no. I mean, they did say. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't. I mean, I never had. Some, but yeah, I mean, you don't have time to think about that. You're. I mean, it's like you don't know if you're in the next world. You know, you've just passed. And all well, you do, you haven't gotten in the new world. But like I say, it, it, for me, it was the. The closest thing I can equate to is, yeah, I mean, it is the one big rush, and it is, I mean, you don't need any alcohol in your system or <laughs> any of that. I mean, complete sobriety is all you need for this, and that's all you want. But, I mean, like I said, the only thing that I can equate it to is that with terror, you get right before a car wreck at 40 miles an hour into a, another car or something. If you've ever been in one of those, that second right before impact, when you know, I mean, it's too late. There's no way out. It's going to happen. You just had that sustained. Yeah, that feeling and that sustained. sustained, and that is why you're just going, oh my god, but I'm still like, you know, the whole way, and that's exactly what I was doing. I mean, just, I can recreate it. I mean, you, go, you can feel it yeah. still. I mean, feel yeah, it. and after I'd say after about 15 seconds, I kind of, you know, after right before we went through the cloud and you know coming out, I, I was starting to kind of not get into free falling, but okay, I don't want to say enjoying, but got a handle on my terror, you know. And, and, uh, I'm falling. I'm still falling. Yeah. It's like, well, oh, it, this is great! <laughs> you know, kind of like that. Well, you know, I've heard people say that when you get into that free fall uh, and, and get into a uh, terminal velocity that you don't have the sensation of falling because you're not accelerating or decelerating. You're just sort yeah, of floating. I, 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 was, was, was I mean, yeah, because, yeah, I would say towards, at, at the end, maybe that's why I didn't have the tears because I wasn't accelerating. But. Mm-hmm. But when you have that rushing feeling. Yeah, I mean, you're rushing. I mean, it's just the whole experience of just, yeah. I mean, you are completely, I was totally. Because you know that you're not being held up by anything. <laughs> it is a long That'll do it. Now, when you I mean, if you've, if you've ever gone off a, a high dive and actually kind of the speed at the very bottom is giving you any just a little bit of a rush. I mean, yeah. that, that, I mean that's 15 feet. Imagine doing that for a mile, you know, 4,000 feet. So did the, the instructor, the, your partner or whatever, you were harnessed in with them. 
Were you facing them or not facing them? No, he, he's, he's on your back. You, you don't need, I mean, you literally do not know he's there because of gravity and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can feel a little tightness, because, but that's just your harness strap. So, yeah, I mean, it's all you, and you can't see him either. I mean, you're the one going, you know, you're looking out ahead, you know, looking at the horizon. No, I want to ask you a question. I'll be honest. Did you close your eyes? Huh? I really did not want to close my eyes for this. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I mean, it was all, you know, I didn't, when I was trying to get my leg on that little ledge, I wasn't looking at the ledge looking like that. You know, I couldn't look to find it. I was like, oh, okay, God, now, where is it? Now, did, now let me ask you another thing, because I, I didn't hear some of this, so maybe you already said this. But if he's harnessed on your back this way, then when you exited the plane, you, um, you went first, in a manner of speaking. But he was obviously right behind you in such a way... Did you feel like he was pushing you out? Oh yeah, I mean that's how that's how it's supposed to work. It's like, and see, I mean, I think it'd be a lot easier. What if you go like? I mean, at any point you want to go? What? 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 Well, yeah. Well, I did. I mean, because <laughs> what happens, Lisa? I mean, you didn't get to see this, but but don't go where Dad will get me on the thing. Well, yeah, I mean, I am. I'm in this plane, and I mean, the the fuse, the, the inner cockpit is about as big as this countertop. Oh, it's a really small. It's, one. it's okay. like Dad's plane without not, the back it's not seat. Like a Cheers episode. No, I mean that would make it. <laughs> Way easier, I guarantee it. If you had, you know, if you were to stand on the edge and, you know, that'd still be scary as right. hell, but at least you'd be standing there and he'd just kind of nudge you out and you'd be into your free fall. Well, the thing that made this so darn difficult is the little openings here. I mean, he opens the door and I about feel like I'm about to drop out. I mean, I'm wedged in. I mean, to get the thing closed, I had to go like this, like when you're packed into a car and then, go, <coughs> oh, got it. Okay, you know. <laughs> were you thinking of Excuse Cliff me, at all no, while you're up there? Well, that's how, I mean, me and Mark, I mean, that's the first thing I told Mark, you know, when, Paul, when I was trying to... Just that, just that, you can keep rolling, Dad, but what, well... When I was trying to guilt him into he, it, you know, Paul's like, going to go to bed, and I think he needs to, to need one to talk to you. Okay. Thanks, Anyway, sir. Well, yeah, I mean, that was the thing, I mean, we, I tried, you know, you go, oh, hey, come on, Cliff, don't you want to jump? And he's like, no, <laughs> not in this plane, you <laughs> know, I'm not going down in this plane, no, <laughs> and he knew the line right away, and he knew that would be coming anyway. But yeah, I mean, I'm wedged in, so he finally opens the door, well, this is the door right here, right next to my hip, and it's about this wide, and my guy, I'm sitting in my guy's lap, well, he's got to get his leg, we got to get both of our legs outside the door, and it's not like, okay, ready? Yeah, I mean, that, it's, like, i got to get this little leg up over in here, and, I, and, and now, I mean, this is 80 miles an hour rushing by right here, and that, that's, that's the earth way down there, and... You know, so now I'm like, now I'm off balance trying, you know, I gotta get my other leg, and I'm like, God, no, oh, and I'm like, clawing on, like, get this other one, oh my God. And you're thinking, I'm working oh. hard. Yeah, uh, this, I mean, this is probably the most fearful part. Because it seems like there's so many chances to really screw up. And go, like, oh God, and then he's got, he's got well, to get. What would, be, well, what would be the problem? I mean, how could you screw up? Because you're already, you're already. Um, Maybe I kind of come out and he conks his head, or I don't know. I, I, let me assure you, you think there are a lot of possible things going wrong at that point. I mean, I was thinking, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You guys fall out of the plane? Yeah. Maybe he goes unconscious and I can't get to his ripcord. <laughs> Cliff! So, so, so you're, you're going through 8,000 feet and going through a cloud layer? Yeah, I would say probably last, you know, if, 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 if the, if the free fall time was 30 seconds, probably the first, 10 or, probably the first, 10 to 15 seconds was absolute pure whole, you know, the one big rush. Well, it was all one big rush, but incredible tear. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of, you do kind of get your senses a bit, you know, probably just like an experienced jumper starting to clue in a bit to what's going on. And then, and then, in a sense, I guess you do enjoy the rush. In, in a sense, you know, you are still totally freaked out, but you're kind of enjoying that you're totally freaked out. Uh huh. And uh, just going because <laughs> it's lasting. Uh, and maybe the last five seconds you're almost en enjoying it even more, or maybe not even totally paranoid, even though actually your body is telling you that it is, because he, uh, he, when he finally, uh, we were like this, he, when he finally pulled the rip, pulled the chute. Do you don't pull it? Or does no, he? all you got to do is arch, and get them right there, they're going to pull it. In fact, they've actually put it in a place where you can't get to it, so you can't screw things up. And uh, let, let, let me finish that other injection of yours. Yeah, I mean, one, once I'm like this, there's, there's, a, there's a, I mean, there's a little metal plate about this wide, about like this, outside of the wheel. I mean, that's what I'm trying to find, like this, 
And uh, because why? Because the goal is for me to be on the edge. To get, I have to get my feet all the way out there. Because he's going to be behind me, and he's going to say, oh. "Ready, set, arch," and then we're going to go out together. And then you arch in a backward C or a forward. So that you're, you push your tummy out. Oh, backward C, yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, but for him, well, he's got to get situated too before we can go. And while he's doing that, I mean, it's you know, it's bumping, scooting, and you go. You know, you're getting bumped. You feel like he's pushing you out of the Yeah, and, well, you don't know. Well, see, the thing is, he's going to say, ready, set, arch, and he's going to kind of push us out. Well, you can't hear at 80 miles an hour wind going by. Now you can't hear. you got the prop right out here. You can't hear a thing. All I hear is, uh, uh, these grunts back there. You know, if he, you don't know if he's saying, move a little to your left, or if he's just said, ready, set, and that was a bump that you were supposed to go out on. And so now <laughs> there's a little bit of, you know, confusion. So he did kind of push you. Oh, yeah. I mean, finally, I mean, I got my feet out there as far as I thought I could go, and I was only this far out on that thing, but I mean, you, I was literally sitting on the edge of the thing. And then he said, like this. did you hear him say, ready, set, arch? No. I just he heard, just it. I just heard, there were about three times where I heard a you know, grunt and felt something, but I didn't know if that was him kind of going, uh, uh, you know, just getting in position. One of them, you know, so I just was trying to give a little with just in case they they were the real thing, and finally one was going, uh, and all of a sudden it was, we're into it, but, <laughs> I mean, he finally. What was his name? Brian. Ryan? Brian. How old was he? He was probably you know, 27, 28. 27 or 28, or younger than you? Yeah, you know, probably about the same age. He, he had about Dan's build, Bigger? I would say. No, yeah. Oh, smaller. Yeah, probably had about Dan's build. In fact, they were joking because it was me and Trent. And they go, oh, you get the tall one. <laughs> what did I get? How tall are you? No, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought Trent was going to do it again. No, yeah, he did. In the same plane? Yeah, so we're going up there. You gotta, yeah, I mean, before the jump, it's like, it's like you know, oh, okay, dude. You know, a little, little buddy shake here. <laughs> All right, man. Well, who went out first? You're, you're, I did. He goes, oh, you look amazingly calm. You're, you, you look just like her. Was mean, he we, nervous? Trent was nervous. He's probably more nervous about the money. Oh, yeah, he was psyched. I mean, nervous about the money? I mean, when he was thinking about jumping again, I mean, the money was as much of an issue as the excitement of the jump. How that much was, was it? Jump, $129. Now, um, I don't know if we can't got done with all the details if we're on the ground yet. No, let's let's hear the rest of it. What, what do you want to hear? I want to, I mean... He's just passing through this cloud layer, and I'm waiting for the chute to open, and we're, we're okay. going back. So okay. let's get the jump and then get the rest of that stuff. Okay. Okay, so. I have a question that your mother wants answered. Let me just, so you can remind me later. So, okay. uh, so anyway, yeah, I was going through, and uh, <laughs> going through, and <clears throat> it was totally tense thing, and ju just started to, in a sense, kind of get a clue as to what's going on, and, and sort of be enjoying it, I guess. And, uh, and then the chute opens and you know, pulls you up. And, uh, is that much of a jerk? It's not that bad. I mean, yeah, it's a jerk. It's like, <laughs> you know, like that. You know, uh -huh. like getting slammed in a boat or something like that, probably. And, uh, but it's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we slow down, you know, it's like, <laughs> and you feel like you've just stopped, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm still holding like this, and it's, you go, I go, uh, <laughs> can you hear each other? Yeah, yeah, so now you can talk perfectly, and, and I'm going, Oh my fucking god! Oh my fucking god! And I'm saying, oh my fucking god! He goes, are you right? I go, yeah. Just let me say, oh my god, a couple times. <laughs> oh my, fuck. yeah. I mean, that's how I mean. Oh my god, that was you know, you're totally reacting to the situation. God, you know, man, I can see you guys get hooked on this. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so then right after that, you know, just like cocaine, though, it takes a little bit more each time. <laughs> it's like <laughs> right, right after that, I go. Uh, well, was it a, a parasail or, or a round shoot? Uh, a parasail, one of the things you can steer. Uh -huh. And uh, so now we're, we're sitting there, and God, I realized that, I mean, every muscle in my body is completely rock-solid tensed. I mean, that's why my face was going, because uh -huh. I was tensing everything up here, too, like, <laughs> total fear. And uh, Like trying to push against something that there was nothing to push against. <laughs> and so, so now I'm in this harness floating, I'm thinking, okay, now I should be okay. And I realized that my legs, I mean, my legs just didn't have anything to do. I mean, at least these are trying to hold on to something. I had to mentally say, okay, just relax and you know, do that. Ten seconds later, I forgot. I wasn't thinking about it anymore, and they were completely tensed again, just sitting there in this thing. Put, put, you know, puts my hands in the little things to steer it, to steer it, and these little things. Oh, you can manipulate the chute then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in fact, you have kind of a key thing at the end to do what you. They, they flare them up at the end so you don't hit quite as hard. And yeah. You, know, right, so you got to go like that. And uh, he, uh, you know, I mean, on the way, to, I mean, I was still gripping those handles so tight that this part of my hand, my right hand was getting numb, but, you know, it was anyone else worth a pinky, you know? And, uh, 
Well, while we're sitting there, I go, well, you never, you never uh, tapped me on the shoulder there. Did I, did I miss that? Or, you know, because I could feel it moving around there a couple times. Meaning what, when? When you were When we were free-falling, I was like this, and then he said he'll t he, would, he would tap me on both shoulders. Right. To, to say the shoes could open. So no, you know. no, that was that was signal for me to then go like this. This is the the free fall position is like this, and and you have your uh, and your legs are are kicked back. You know, kind of like trying to touch your butt. And you're in a little seat position. And that's your free fall position. Well, I was for whatever reason. He said, you know, do this at first. And I, I said, I put my hands out right away. Or he probably just didn't want those getting in the way of anything. So to do it like this, and then I think once we get stabilized, then he would you know, tap me when it's time. Well, I go, I go, you know, what happened there? And Misty goes, no, nah. he goes, well, we had a little problem with the shoot there, but you didn't notice. <laughs> I go, huh? <laughs> so you go, I go, man, you got to tell him what happens. I can tell the story. What happened was, normally when you free fall, you free fall at 110 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, with two of you, you free fall at 180. Just because, you know, I'm not sure why. Wait, I'm going to grab it, yeah. And uh, that that's where you max out at. And, uh. So, what they do to compensate for that is they, they've got a little drag shoe basically that comes out and, and slows you to, down to about oh. 10, you know, and, and, then, and then you have a regular shoe. Well, that, that wouldn't open up. I mean, we were doing 180. <laughs> that would open up. And then we were on the ground, he's talking to Tom, the other guy, you know, you know trying to get the story. And, yeah, you know, he says one more, you know, he, he tried three times and it wouldn't open. And he, like, finally got on the fourth try and said it. Yeah, if it didn't get up, go on that one, they were, I mean, one more try, then they're going to the, he's going to the reserve shoot. You mean a reserve drag shoot? Reserve shoot. The the drag shoot is here, and then and basically it's got to come out before the oh. regular one is accessible. You mean it wasn't coming out? Right. It so it, so the other one wasn't going to come out. Right. Yes. <laughs> so it was like I say, it was one pull away from what they call a cutaway, and and then they'd have to go to another shoot that, that doesn't have, that that doesn't have one of those drags, I assume, but. Uh, it's backed by an FAA certified guy. So as exciting as it was for you, think how exciting it was for your free fall partner. <laughs> well, thing, how uh, about the landing? They can uh, landing. You know, I told him about my knee. You know, I, I was asking like if I should wear a, you know, wear my knee brace. I know if the aerodynamics would get affected too much, and say, well, it'll probably be all right. And uh, I mean, we'd seen someone land pretty hard. This woman had landed, and <clears throat> I guess got the wind knocked out of her, or maybe broke her tailbone or something. But I mean, she had hit pretty hard, and there were people running across the field to go see if she's all right. And she's out there for for a little bit, um, but yeah, I mean, you see some people hit really hard, you know. It's like they go, you know, it's like maybe you know, maybe care. jumping off a eight foot you know roof or something like that, you know. So anyway, pretty hard. yeah. So we we're coming in and basically landed on our landed on our butts. But it was a pretty soft, did you think? It, it was for me, but he took a lot of the. In fact, once we got down, I, you're all right, because I mean, I kind of got him right on the, on the nuts, I think. Oh, you mean he landed first and you sort of landed on he's, him? He's, no, he's, yeah, a little bit. I mean, he is behind me. Oh, okay. And as we're coming in, I mean, we're going at an angle like this. So I, I lift my legs up. And it's kind of probably equivalent to kind of going off a, a playground slide. And, and hit so, so once you got down and, and it was over, then. then I, go, I, go, I go, you all right? He goes, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, but I mean, what was your own emotion? Oh, I did. I uh, once that was all right. I go wow, and then I just, I just leaned back on the thing and just started laughing. <laughs> where, where was, <laughs> where was, <laughs> was Trent? On Trent, his way Trent was already on the ground. They got down before we did. You mean they went out after, but got down first? Yeah, they free fall. I think they free. They probably free fell farther. Now, d how how long was it from from plane to ground? Probably eight minutes. A long time. Right. No. No. Maybe. No, less, maybe, no. maybe. You mean from leaving the airplane? Right. Oh no. What name is? Maybe. Maybe this. Eight minutes. Might have, might have well, because six. they see they had the parasail, so they were cruising around a little bit, huh? Yeah. You mean you you were on on, on the parachute for eight minutes? You think? Mm, maybe six minutes. Six minutes. When did they open it? What? It seemed like it? forever. <laughs> Probably. They they usually try to deploy at four thousand feet. They say. Oh. Uh huh. Okay, I have two questions. One, how much did it cost again? $129. $129. Okay, now, this isn't something you're going to get into. If you've done it, and that's okay. Your mother wants to know that, and I don't want you to be dumb. I'll see that or motorcycles. I need one or the other. Well, 
No, we'll, I mean, we'll get you a nice it, it's, it's not. Ex <laughs> I mean, it's not accessible. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, I, it's not really accessible to me. I mean, it, it's a whole different matter. To I mean, first of all, you got to get about 15 jumps before you can first survive to do it yourself. I mean, I, I, in this town, it'd be pretty pretty difficult. No, I'm saying you aren't saying to yourself, boy, I can't wait to do that again. You're saying I'm glad I did it, or I can't wait to do that again. Uh, it, it's more I'm glad I did it. I mean, I told. I mean, your first jump, I would say, is worth four or five hundred dollars. I mean, you could pay five hundred dollars to experience and say. You get, and as soon as you got the grand, you go, that was worth it. And then, but I'd say your second jump would probably be worth 50 bucks or 75 bucks, just because you've gone through that pure terror. Well, Dad's got a plane. <laughs> It'd be easier to get out of. That's right. <laughs> okay, any other closing um, philosophical comments? No, the way, there were about four pages of waivers. <laughs> to sign, <laughs> had to sign about 20 places and well, indicate that even if there's act, passive or active negligence, it was fine with you. <laughs> really? Well, now, I don't want to, you know, he asked for philosophical comments, so I don't want to bring this down <coughs> to a street level or anything, but how do you, you know, now that you've actually done it and you've thought about it, how do you think this is going to play to the babes at the Red Dog? I don't know. What I mean, would you put, to, Katie, put a value on it? Katie came by. Well, it gives you enough story to tell. Katie came by. Katie came by, you know, just to, because I had sky jumped and it was just telling me that. You just came by to hear how it turned out. Oh, because you had told her you were going to? I think she might have heard. When I got off the plane, I ran into Tony, Tony two, two of the players were there, Tony and Hunter. I mean, for other reasons, but I told them, I mean, I'm not sure where she'd been. I might have told them before. Hmm. Yeah, in fact, I think I did. Because I think like, that was a reason I couldn't coach a practice or something. Although, of course, now this is a problem. You could go into a great, deal, a great amount of detail telling to a girl and give her more of the, you know, flesh out the story, give her more of feeling what you went through. But that in, in some way minimizes your, your, the macho aspect of it. You know, I mean, are you going to be saying, and then I went, oh my God, or are you going to be saying, we jumped, we... I already, I already told the story to a gorgeous woman at work. And Which way played better? Oh, I, well, with me, I usually do the honesty thing. I usually, I usually just straight up with them. They, they seem to like that more because they can, they feel like you're not speaking the line of BS. So which, so you went through the whole oh, thing? I said, I said, oh my fucking God, oh my fucking God. She was laughing, oh God, I'm going to try that. Okay, I'm finished that. Okay, we're fading out here. This is Art Willman who will be. Hey, Art. Hey! How are you doing? How are you? Hey, Art. Bill D was on the camera here. Who is this here? We're this good, Mike. This is the world famous bike. <laughs> Sometimes search doctor. Randy. Hi. Actually, Hi, Randy. Flying the colors. Oh, that's really good. Huh? Have a, uh, have a little bit of fun with that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
two bucks and then go off and I went in and run a triathlon. I was the bicycle. Oh, you were? Have you been spending time out in uh, Hooverton? You bet. Yeah. It's not out on Monday. It's the silver smile. Everybody miles. passed you. Been out there about a week a month. No, I started the average since, and since and April. Way. That's great. But actually, I wasn't really relaxed. How about you been flying, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. stop by sometime. And he's any minus tide. Oh no! You I'm, got a thousand I'm, feet I'm, out there, Bill. I'm in front of the place. Thousand feet I'm, of sand. I'm too cowardly. Yeah. Stuff. Well, as Lou Packard told me, once you start yeah. doing beach landings, think of your airplane as disposable. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, this has gotten close. I, when I got it, I thought I was going to go all this stuff. I just wide, yeah. 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 Enjoy like life and live life. 8,000 feet of asphalt, that's my idea of yeah, sneaking in. There you go. <laughs> Those labs are wonderful. I used to have. They're swimmers. Yeah. He's only 18 months old. And boy, do they love to fetch it, huh? Hi, how are you doing? Are you filming? Well, no, just watch. I just, I just saw John. <laughs> how are you guys doing? Good. All right, I'm quite fine. Fun? Nice. Nice day. Yeah. This is the spot where we took a picture with the, with the kids for our Christmas uh, thing years ago. And it looked over the glacier this way and there was a lot more view then because all these trees weren't here.
Ja. See a stretching for more air time there. <laughs> Okay, this is uh, this is September 4th, and we're at the Juno Pioneers home, and uh, we're talking with uh, Julie Williams. Your name is Julie Williams. Yes. Is that mm -hmm. Where are you employed, Mr. Williams? At the Search Medical Clinic here in Juno. Mm -hmm. Are you a nurse? I'm a registered nurse. Uh -huh. Do you know Margaret Howard? I've uh, seen her. I'm acquainted with her uh, through her visits to our clinic. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you, you are a Clinkett Indian? Yes, I am. Do you speak Clinkett? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. And it's my understanding now that we're going to go talk to Mar with Margaret Howard. You're going to talk to her and uh, to the best of your ability make an assessment as to how you think she is able to communicate and uh, comprehend. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, well, why don't we do that? Okay. Hello, Margaret. What's this your tea? خدقيه 
Adanik Echadoasak, Hinget Renach, Nushkitan Echad. Idaya Koshusigega, Adi Inchkahasnikia. Ach, Jin Rashad, Idaya Koshusagea. Yaksha? Achjin Rashad Idaya pushes a gay Rashad Achjin Hadria Achka. Ya Akhti Penny Cornell Adanik Edo See Evelyn, you get to what's up. That's a little hard for me to really, you know, tell. Okay. Yeah, okay. Bobby, get you see cool. Ginger, a Kaha. Penny, it's okay, you see, cool. Penny, Cornell. Isha in Yehat Kakas, Yeh, in Kakriniko. You see, cool. Dagi Akushusi gave us a die of a kaya. What a co archi had to was a tet. She seemed to have responded to Levi. I can get that much, you know, and uh, the other questions, I, you know, it's, it's not too much of, I can't really tell, you know. Really difficult, you know, to, to do. It's 
it's hard for me to tell her reaction, you know, if, if, mm -hmm. it's, if it's a yes or no, and I, um, I don't know about asking her those other questions, you know, so. Mm -hmm. She, uh, did you, when she answers, um, was it always a yes, or can you, I think can it was you tell between difference between yes and no? No, she just responded yes, and the questions I asked, you know, were yes, were yes questions, and I don't know, she didn't, she didn't really respond when oh. I asked her about her hearing, you know. Okay. If she How would she respond me? if you asked her um, if she knows, uh, you know, names of people that we know she does not know. So the response okay. should be no, would she? Okay. All right. Well, Bob, you do a sago a ka gisi ku. Levi McKinley Gacy Cool. Yeah. What did you ask her? I just asked her if she knew Levi. Uh huh. I'll ask her again. Yeah. It's good to ask the same question mm -hmm. several times. Mm -hmm. I have. Oh, no. yeah. Levi McKinley Gacy Cool. Levi McKinley Gacy Koo. Khadi Yatinka. I see Evelyn, you do a circle, uh, Evelyn Smith, you see Kuga. She responds to two names. She, yeah. Well, to Levi, she seems to, she nodded. Mm hmm Evelyn, she did. Mm-hmm. How about Penny Cornell? Penny Cornell, you do a circle, uh, uh, Yisha, what gaysi ku? Do think it's sa ye, uh, da nik e do a sa kutso? Yesikuka. She knows Penny. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 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 I asked her if she under, you know, if she could, if she could hear me, you know. Uh -huh. She said yes. Yeah, so that's, that's the response I would say. Uh -huh. yeah. So the questions you've asked her have been, does she know people? Well, she responded, you know, with her head, yes, yeah. that, you know, for... Penny Cornell uh -huh. and for Levi, she I asked her a couple of times, uh -huh. but that's about it. You uh -huh. know.
you want me to ask her anymore? I, well, I you, you know, what we would, of course, be interested in is uh, if she has any conceptual ability at all, any ability to reason or make any judgments or informed judgments. Do you have any opinion about that? I think it would be very difficult. You huh. know, I, I, can, I can get a response from for her na for the names. Uh -huh. I don't know as far as making a legal opinion. Uh -huh. It would be very difficult. Mm. Do you think she could make decisions that related to her own welfare or desires? Not from just this, you know, I, I couldn't really say. Um, I'd have to be with her, you know, more than one time. It, uh -huh. it, it's difficult. You know, you can't just make a judgment, I think, just from one visit. Right. And not being with her and, and knowing how she responds. If she yeah. responds to the names, uh, Okay. Uh, Sandy, this uh, you've been watching this interview, uh, and you're familiar with Margaret. Is uh, this about her normal state of health? Uh, is she better today, worse today, or? It looks to me like she's having a fairly good day. She was uh -huh. up earlier this morning in the jury chair, which um, she does on good days. Uh -huh. And she's very responsive right now. Does. Uh huh. She's really paying attention and responding. But overall, she, her health is not good. Okay. This is typical of what she's like. Okay. All right. Thank you. In that good day, What are you asking her to? I just told her I'm going to be leaving now. Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. She, she responded to the names. That's, that's about as far, I think, as I can get. I, you know, and then she nodded her head. It's really definite nod yeah. a couple of times. But, you know, she, she wouldn't respond um, to the no things, you know, like the one name, the Bob. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't respond. Uh -huh. You know at all. It just. So I mean, so I guess what we're saying is she could differentiate between names. She knew who she knew, and she knew who she didn't know in a way. Is that sort is of in a, I guess in a way she did. She didn't respond. You know, she didn't shake her head or anything. Yeah. Or what did you say? Do you know so and so? Is that yes. Right? Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, I just said, when I first went in when I talked to her I just introduced myself. You mm -hmm. know. Told her that I was a clinket, you know, and that was my. I gave her my clinket name, which is the same as Penny's, and um, she responded to me as as a clinket. That's all. I don't think she, you know, really knew me or anything. So. But. Um, well, the big question is, the. Does she have the capacity to, to exercise judgment or make decisions that have any complexity to them or any, uh, you know, in this case, could she make a decision with regard to what she wanted her assets to be? She'd have to be much more clearer than what she is. Yeah. Did you ask her the same question several times? You yeah. said you were, and were the answers consistent or? She seemed to know Levi's name, you know. And she responded, and when I asked her, did you understand, can you hear me, can you understand, you know, and she said, she said she understood what I was saying, you know, when I was asking her, but I, I didn't go into any other questions than that, because, yeah, well, I didn't go into any other, you know, complicated questions or anything to mm -hmm. ask her about money or legal things. Why was that, that you didn't do that? I don't think she would, I just didn't feel that she would understand me, you know, she, I asked her some of the questions several times, and she would, a couple of times, you know, she really responded, she said yes, mm -hmm. she shook her head, definitely, mm -hmm. and uh, that was it. it with, in, re in response to a name? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You asked her um, about different people that she knew, 
did she, I, it seemed to me you asked her a couple of times about Penny, a couple of times about other people. Yeah, she, she seemed to have said yes to those names. Each time? You know, to Evelyn it was kind of so-so, like she didn't, she had the one question, she, she answered sort of yes, and the next time she didn't really, she didn't really respond to that name, you know, she didn't say. Anything else? Okay. I if I asked her anything else, you know, I just didn't feel, um, I know. it'd be very difficult. I've known her for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a long time. Yeah. Because she just closes her eyes and then, you know, you think, you, you know, she does, but she's, I don't see too much of a really response there. Well, if, if Levi or anyone, Levi McKinley or anyone else, who could speak Clinket and could form a I, I relationship with her. Do you think he could carry on a conversation that would lead to any confidence about what she wanted done with her will? I don't know. I might really have to see how he reacts with her, yeah. you know, to see what what his response, what, what her response would be to him, you know. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to see how, when he does speak like it to her, I'd like to see how she reacts. Yeah. That might be a, another way to approach it. Yeah. But you know, we were sitting and he well, was... Well, that was in back, back yeah. Huh. No, today? No, you weren't in back. No, but he was in back of me. Yeah. That's why he could, you know, he could just start. Oh, he just kind of... Okay, let's oh, have each cheek. Now, what is that, a rainbow? I don't know, I can't see it. Let me yeah, get a real close up on it. Okay, now yeah. the other side. We were at the. Uh, balloons. What is that on the other side? Balloons. Like oh, yes, that. balloons. Religious ed kickoff. And they call it. Mm -hmm. Put your shoes on it. <laughs> Mostly it was the kids. I think we were the only adults. Oh, were you really? <laughs> and one cheek. So, yeah, there. And what is that? It's not a dinosaur. That's a mouse. That's a mouse. This I is believe. a giant. That's the whoops, whoops. Oh, He's moving around a lot. Don't move around. Okay. Quite the fact. Who did that, Brian? Who put them on there for you? I forgot the name. Ro... Remember? No. Rosemary? Oh. Well, Brian, turn your head to the right. This way? That's the other right. The other right. Now hold it there, because I'm going to cut a close-up on that dinosaur. It's a neat dinosaur. Get it in focus here. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I, I realized at the last minute that that's what she was going to do. She saw a likely her. spot. Yeah. Okay, who? It looks like a cat up there. Mm -hmm. It looks like a snake up there. Can you put her on me? I don't know if she's going you want to take that cat home with you? No, that's okay. I do. There's a reason why we don't have pets at our house. They cost too much. No. <laughs> well, Mom, can I my Mom, I want to one. And we have a dog around at, at the other house. Oh, you might as well say we How can you dogs. measure? We were both raised in houses that had pet dogs, although we didn't have a dog inside the house. That's right. At our house. Uh, all right, Kate, let me look at your heart there. Uh, pretty nice. Now, do you know the name of the lady that did it for you? Mm, I don't know. Did it did it tickle did it tickle at all while she was doing it? Mm, yeah. A little bit. Did you hold real still? Mm -hmm. She did with a brush, with a sponge. Crayons. Mm -mm. With a crayon, a special kind of crayon. Crayon. Oh. Darn. Now go back there because I want to get a, see the one I see. I just got it on. I saw the heart. Now let me show the. Let me see the other one. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Pretty oh. nice. Pretty nice. Then maybe he can get us all together. This is a grown yeah. man with pictures on his face. Yeah. That's a pretty nice dinosaur too. The kids got to choose what should be on Daddy's. Face. Oh. Um, oh, let me I get that mouse close up. Yeah. What'd you say? Did you have to pay for these? Were these uh, these are free? 
Mm -hmm. yeah. In the classified section of the Tightwad Gazette. No, I'll, I'll just volunteer every week at CCD. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. We got them all. Um, everybody say spaghetti. 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 No, I meant cheese. Cheese. No, I meant she whiz. Cheese. All right. Now say goodbye. Goodbye. Bear be destroyed or uh, no, we're gonna move them. Mm -hmm. As she loves to be with Grandma Ellen, her favorite part of the day comes during Becky's afternoon nap. Grandma Ellen takes Kelly outside under two tall trees and tells her wonderful stories about fairies and princesses and butterflies and dragons. But a day came when Kelly could no longer be that nap. It was time for Kelly to begin school. Kelly and her family were in the kitchen eating breakfast when Grandma Ellen arrived on one very important day. Hello, Grandma called. She gave her <coughs> the afternoon. The afternoon seemed like such a long time away. Mm -hmm. Kelly's new green jacket and blue school bag were already marked with her name and waiting near the door. When lunchtime had come and gone, it was finally time to leave. Grandma Ellen put Becky in the stroller with her favorite stuffed teddy bear. How excited and grown up Kelly felt as she walked to school. When they found the preschool classroom, Kelly's teacher was waiting at the door. Hello, she greeted. My name is Mrs. Mean. I'm Kelly Martin, Kelly replied. You're going to get, get, no, I'm going to get to the hydro store. What's going on? Could just, just walk off. Keen, huh? You could turn around. Yeah, that's the boy. <laughs> How's the take, Don? You better turn it off. <laughs> I'm gonna have problems with my glasses here. Is this? <laughs> Is this the, t the taste test, Dan? Oh, they're hiding them on us now. Of course, King. Geez, I wish you could have seen Brian's ba basketball game. And his team won. And his team. I'm all the way up to here. <laughs> And this one lady says Brian is, you know, whipping around, and Brian was one of the better players, you uh -huh. know, and, uh, and, and, and he's whipping around, and, and this mother who's sitting right next to me tells, yells out to her child, um, uh, Reed, I mean, she doesn't even yell it like he can hear on the run, she says it in a way like a mother demanding he respond, uh -huh. Reed, Reed, Reed like, you know, breaks away from the action and comes over. Go guard that number 20, which is what Brian was. Uh -huh. And the, uh, the guy on the other side, or I don't know if it was her husband or anything, says, uh, you know, he's already guarding someone else. She goes, oh, she goes, oh, I didn't know that. And then she goes, well, I don't care. I'm your mother. Go get number 20. <laughs> that, was, that was Brian. So we were really hooting and hollering for him. Oh, See, it? it's genetic. I, uh, yeah, I, was, I, I didn't want you to miss that. Yeah. You may let it be moving some later. I probably don't get as much of that because it won't be. Well, Grandpa, you told him that would be part Fill of it. Fill down the... back there. Fill that down. You need huh? some more well, food, don't you? I can get it. Yes. Don't worry, I can. Can you? Good. Oh, well, yeah. It's simple. Easy as pie. Good. 
Looks like Kink is pretty interested in it. Oh, yes, she sure is. She's really alert by it. Yep. Okay, you know. Last. Here. Yes. Can we close the torches? Sure. These sort are of nice, nice and cozy. What? These sort are of nice and cozy. No. It's kind of, I thought it might be kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I can see all the way to the North Pole. <laughs> did, did you see that one? <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, something like They're um, advertising some kind of camera, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's see it. I got another little bird. Hello. Oh, isn't this one sweet? I have a rocking horse that you can do. Whoops. Isn't this birdie sweet, Cam? Yeah, it's a pretty teeny little thing. Teeny little guy. What a sweet little bird. Bill Beebles on a Sunday at a Knights of Columbus breakfast, doing his part, washing dishes. We've been here for about an hour. I haven't seen him washing too many, but he's going to get right on it now. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> driving that car? Me! Wow! Okay, let's okay. see you go. Turn this way. Go to the, I'm, I'm go that way. Bye. Bye. Drive, drive carefully. Okay, now watch where you're going. Turn the wheel. Four years old, huh? Four. 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 Cakes. Hey, do a cheers with your fritters. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to cheers? Like this. Cheers. Touch them together and say cheers. Kate's not sure about this. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this is this is for Audrey, this is for Mom. Why are you telling me that? 
Okay, so what do you want to tell us how good those uh, apple fritters are? Better than a donut, better than looking at apple yeah, fritters. Really? Uh, you know, uh, Lisa, uh, Kate and Paul were talking in the store about how it would be if they were the only ones in the store. No, uh, no. Everything we wanted to eat. Oh, and you could just sort of do what you wanted? Yeah, there? we could have candy. Now, what if you started getting all jittery and jumpy the way you do when you have something really, really sweet? That's okay. And they, were okay. they were deciding who they would invite to go with them. We invite our friends, but no one else. No adults. Who would the kids be? Our friends. Such as? Um, who would you invite, for instance? Let's say you can only invite maybe, three friends. Maybe the bar uh, girls and any of them. Ah, not Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Competition? I'm not sure. How about Brian? All right, friends. Would Brian come? Mm-hmm. How about his friends? Mm-hmm. Adam and Jesse and... Uh, what it sounded like it was really turning into was anyone except for an adult who would, would be passing judgment on it. Thank you. Listen, would you let any adults in? And they go, no. I said, how about if you, I said you could eat anything you wanted? Would you let me in? They said, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> would you want me to be there to supervise, Paul? No question about that. Thanks, Kate. What do we, Kate? Kate, you know, Brian's birthday's coming up pretty soon. Of course, you know that. But, um... Have you got any ideas on it? Are you going to make any gifts for him or do anything special? Or you got any plans? Um, um, we're making the right birthday favor. The birthday favor? Kate is wrapping mm -hmm. all the birthday favors. Oh, really? He, oh, he so that's how we're good at it. By herself. Shh. Paul, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. I told you because you assured me that you could handle the responsibility of the secret. I know, but Brian not know. Well, no, it's not your secret to tell. You ju you're standing in front of Uncle Bill and Kate. You can't do that without checking with me. Okay. Yeah, I got my hand. I gotta decide. I gotta finish getting Audrey's Christmas present. Ten little things, you know, that I just. Well, that's good because I only got her one big thing. Well, and then I'm gonna get her one kind of semi. Oh, what'd you get? Ticket. I love Grandpa. Are you getting anything else? No, that's not. Oh, I thought that was her birthday. I thought that was her birthday. It's a combo. I, I, I gave it to her to birthday. And cold on through today, tonight, and into tomorrow, with uh, cool, cool temperatures tonight, maybe increasing cloudiness, and continued windy on Saturday. <laughs> the first picture is but Kate Ebo's before you talk in the morning. Um, probably because it takes a little while to get the epidural on. Mm. Doesn't hurt. Not to get it in, to get it right. so it blows. I have the epidural. Are you going to be all right, Phil? <laughs> when was your next um, session? In um, June 6, 87. I forget about it. And how old are you? 34. Mm -hmm. Young. That's too young. You said it takes 40 minutes for the epidural. Yeah, they, 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 they uh, put it in a little test dose in there. If they're in, if they're near a, there's a lot of more blood vessels there. Right. So I put a little test dose in. It's got some. Doctor Phil. And they monitor her heart. And. Uh, oh, it is. <laughs> for both of them. Um. No, well, Annie was in Seattle. Oh, that's right. And um. Yeah, Curtis. Well, we started in here, and then when I came back, I was in here for a bit. It's like a week in here. A week. Well, she tried to come early. Curtis did, but we caught it real real quick. You know, so they stop it, but. Mm. Baby is probably being born right now. These are the people that are waiting. Huh? I think we'll hear some noise. They just, they just, oh, snap that door shut. Maybe within the next five minutes. Okay.
You hear the baby? Yeah. Good lusty lungs. Looks like everybody's pretty. How much you weigh, Tom? Oh, they just did. Huh. What was his weight? Six thirteen. Six thirteen. Oh, very good. She thinks Paul was seven thirteen. I think he was seven three. Because I was remembering him just a little smaller than ours. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a heat lamp up above. Mm -hmm. So why they got all this off of him? <laughs> She said she's keeping him. <laughs> she, yeah, she did. She has been so excited the last one. It's pretty amazing. I never get tired of seeing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sunbathing. Looks like he's sunbathing on the beach. <laughs> Definitely a boy.
what his name is. It's going to be a while before we know. <laughs> At least the recovery room. I don't think she's there yet. Can we get him? Have we had him crying on this? Oh, yes, we must have. I've got a lot of them. Okay. It was like in there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is amazing. One moment, you know, Lisa's lying down. I see, you know, they drew right where they're going to cut. Mm -hmm. I sat there holding her hand. The next thing I know, they said, oh, we can see the head. And I peeked around, brown hair, popped him right out. Wiped him down and brought him right over to Lee's and we're both crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I held him right up to her and she was able to turn around and get her arms around him. Uh -huh. Looked at him and held him there for a good, good five minutes, just crying, <laughs> talking. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a miracle. It's amazing. Yeah. Tell me. And there he is. Yeah. He's a little person. <laughs> Look at this, he's got the exact same marks, almost exactly as Paul had. Oh, did he? I don't remember the that. same. Well, and, and when Paul is still seeing, can you see a little bit between his eyebrows? He's still got a little bit long. Show you the four presents and you choose one. Paul, oh, is, he, is he what? Is he what you thought he was going to look like? <laughs> no, what about my present? <laughs> That's good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When he was crying, okay. he stopped crying when I held him. Did he? Yeah. Oh. But he really did. Well, I wondered if that's when he stopped in there because he yelled and yelled and yelled. Can you get it, Paul? I've got a knife if you need it. McIntyre, well, and we're talking about well, offspring. Come on. My battery's getting low. <laughs> We'd like to hear the name. His name is Cole Michael Paramore. Cole? Oh. A fine name. A yes. fine name. Yes. When yes. you can live with. Yep, yep, yep. And then Michael, after the brother I had. Oh. C O L E? Yep. <laughs> Look at that. Cole does great things. Prehistoric <laughs> 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 racers. Hey, Grandma, look at my prehistoric racers. Did you got to get that? 
for each day that Lisa's in the hospital, yeah. Paul will be able to open a gift. Oh, that's great. So you got, Wait, now what's this hole for? You got, it goes on the end of your pencil. You can put it right on the top. Oh, you mean it sharpens? Well, no, it's in show the you. pencil. Let me show yeah. you. You can go right on the top of a pencil. Yeah, Phil said that there was that there was just a kid who came into the center, and you know we haven't heard of, we've heard one other child yeah, okay. since we were deciding on the uh -huh. name mm -hmm. whose name was Cole and and uh, C O L E. Uh huh. Not C O L. No. And you know there was there was a small part of me we're when I was out of fascinating about the name. I was thinking we're getting out of running out of something. McIntyre's and the Devils are all minerals, you know? Oh, boy, boy. Pretty proud to have a little brother. Okay, I'm going to pillow over the piece yet. Well, we got a bunch of flash. There's something flashing here. Okay, batteries going. I can't get it there. Are we in your way? No, I just want to check your blood pressure. You can move right around me. Looks a little bit like you did when you were a baby. I wonder if he's going to gain a little weight. Why do you want to hold him again? I will, honey. <laughs> Isn't he precious? Mm -hmm. Look how small he is, honey. How Cole? white he is? What? His name's Cole. Cole? Cole Michael. And if you have a problem with memory, you can think, hmm, just like an old time steam engine. Cole. That isn't why we need him there. Cole Michael. No, that's it's, right. It's derivative of Nicholas. Michael Michael. Mm -hmm. okay. And I forget what the meaning of Nicholas is. Um, he just opened his eyes for just a minute. Lucky, aren't we, Paul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom? Yes, honey. Uh, when the baby comes home, will we put him in his crib? Yeah. Careful, his head wants to fall down. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a little bit angry. Yes.